welcome into another episode of Scurry and the Scrub. It is I, Jordan Scurry, here with my man Matt DeMarinas. Today we got a special guest uh, coming on, uh, Scurry and the Scrub favorite, uh, I, dare I say. Uh, um, I'm just welcoming in my man Flan. Flan, welcome in. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Jordan and, and Scrub. And I love that <laughs> you say it is I, because most people say it is me, but I'm I'm uh, yeah. thankful that you know your uh, grammar. No, I think I, I, I think be, I just I listened to, to a grammar podcast. policeman when I was a little bit younger. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you appreciate that. Jordan yeah. always rocks the it yeah. is I thing. Always. <laughs> You gotta oh. you, you gotta give the people something to look forward to. Good grammar is That's good. Right. I think That's Flan right. is our first repeat guest, maybe other than like Simon, right? The shot quality yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. So like congratulations, that, Flan. Oh, he, thank you. That's what I'm saying. He's a, good. He's a favorite. He's Feels a favorite good. of the podcast. That's right. We appreciate when you come on. We always mm-hmm. think it creates you know good content for us here. Um, but I, can, I I'd be remiss if I didn't start the show off with saying for our viewers, this is my first uh november where i know i can no shave i can grow facial hair for the first time took me a while but flan <laughs> are you are you are you on this wave matt i know you're on the no shave november. Yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah always Flan, are you on it are you... Uh, i could i could get in on it probably I could but you're get not in on it. not your thing I've noticed, a, I've noticed a few people who are in that category so let me give it some thought <laughs> ask my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a few. You got a few days before the opener, so maybe just shock that Des Moines crowd. Yeah, that homecoming crowd that you yeah. have there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just uh, thinking maybe you could do some no shave, go on a win streak. If you, yeah. if you if you if you get, just keep winning, maybe you just shouldn't shave. No shave November. Okay. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Just throwing it, it out there. Thought. Yo, Flynn, I got to put you on the spot though, because I've been like riding this. I've been trying to push for this like all summer. So now that you got fans back in the arena this year and uh Jalen Agnew is in Omaha rehabbing her injury are you are we gonna hang this jersey up in the rafters like does it is the time <laughs> make sense or what are we doing here wow yeah, that is putting me on the spot right away yeah uh, I was, I'm, I'm coming with the hard hitters I don't know I mean you know I, I always said it's you know Ras you know got Connie and Tanya really quickly up into the mm-hmm. rafters when he was uh when he was the women's basketball coach and we haven't had anybody since, you know, and that was like, I think Tanya finished in 88, uh, Connie in 86. So, and they were both probably up in the rafters by 90. Um, so, <laughs> See? so maybe it's about time. I mean, we're working on 30 ish, 30 ish years since somebody has been put up there. So that's what I'm uh, saying. Like, I think, the, I think that there's been some like all time great hoopers that have come through here. I mean, you guys won a yeah. Big East title. Like, there's some players from that team that need to be honored. Like, yeah. I mean, I think starting with number five is a good way to go. You, you know, and, and then just let it roll because you got to, okay. you got to honor some more women in this in this arena, man. You got your facilities. Yeah, you're right. You got the roof up. You're you right. The, so, do you like a do you like retired jerseys or a ring of honor? What do you? Yeah, you brought that up. That's a good question. I I hadn't thought of ring of honor because the jersey thing is always the first thing you think of. Ring of honor sounds pretty cool though, too. So that's a neat idea. Yeah. I don't know. Depend, I guess problem, it depends on what your marketing thinks of. Hey, the problem with, with retiring number five is that Chevy wore number five, too. And if if we were to retire number five, Chevy would go around Omaha telling everybody that her jersey's retired. I think okay. she's, I think she's going to do that anyway, though, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I, might have to – they might have to put two last names when they retire it, I think, if they're yeah. going to go that route. I used let's, to see, play- let's see, knowing Jalen, how – I do. I'm pretty sure, like, if we retire five Agnew, she's going to say it's because of five Chevy, because of the coaching um, and the mentorship that led to what Jalen turned into as a player. So I think yeah. if you retire Jalen's number, she'll make sure Chevy gets her flowers at the ceremony. Yeah. It's it, it's <laughs> almost like it's also a tribute to yes. Chevy as well. Yeah. So I, yeah. I agree with that. That's yeah. a great point. 100%. That's a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to put you on the spot right away, but uh, we're, we're here to talk about this current team, this current roster, um, and we just wanted to kind of go through each player um, from freshman on up and kind of get your thoughts about them and um, give the fans and the listeners some insight into what this this current roster looks like. And I just wanted to kind of kickstart it with your only um, freshman this year, not your only newcomer, but your only freshman, um, Lexi Unruh. Uh, you know, obviously she hasn't practiced much this offseason, so I guess it's a twofold question. 
Um, what's her, you know, status leading up to this final week of preseason practice? And how do you how do you see her skill set having a potential impact on this team in her first year? Yeah, well, I think we probably need to take a long view of, of her just because she hasn't practiced as much. I tell you what, she's really athletic. She's six one. She's made some play when she has been in practices or workouts. She's made some wow type plays, um, you know, sometimes on the defensive end where just her length um, uh, has been really impressive. So I think, you know, she's somebody that once we can get her in practice full time and she gets healthy, she's, I think she has a chance to be a really good player down the line, but you know, the longer she goes without practicing, the harder it's going to be for her this mm -hmm. year. I think that's the, that's it. That's the thing that's too bad. But at the same time, you know, I think, um, you know, my conversations with her have been that every time you've been on the floor, we, <laughs> you belong at this level. You, you, you'll be a good player in this program. Um, so I think we're excited about her. I think she's got a good, I think her makeup's good too. I think she's, you know, I've been impressed with how she's kind of handled the, she hasn't been able to practice a lot. She hasn't felt great. And yet, you know, she, she seems to be doing okay. She's done great in the classroom and you know, makes friends easily. And you're always worried about that with first year, first year, you know, that first semester is hard for anybody mm -hmm. adjusting to college and whatever. And to have, you know, some of the physical things that she's gone through, um, I feel, I feel good about her, her makeup and her resiliency. So I think when we get her on the floor, she'll, she can make an impact. Her dad was a prolific scorer back in uh, South Dakota back in the day. So she comes from a good gene pool. Uh, good kid. Gonna, I think she'll be a good player, but it's she's got to get on the practice court to to get to work her way into you know the conversation to get to play. Gotcha. Yeah, oh, that's dope. But and then I think Matt, you want you want to just roll it on? Yeah. Uh, you so, want to just go do a quick roll? You want to go through? Yeah, just uh, we we're going to alternate. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah, you're I, good. I didn't want to hog the whole thing, so yeah. No, you're good. <laughs> Just so I got you. Let's do. Let's do Jamie next and rock it on. Yeah. Like that. So yeah, no. Looking at next one, I think going down the roster, Jamie Haran. Uh, you know, from just watching some of you know Matt puts me on to some of the good highlights for these, and uh, watching some of just the Big East uh, uh, semifinal at Marquette, and and watching that game, I think she played really well in that game. And I kind of was just wondering, you know, as a coming into her sophomore year, um, like where you see her impact being, I think this year and how to, you know, capitalize off the success she had late last year. Yeah, that's good. She, you know, what I love about Jamie is that she didn't get a chance to play a lot. And when we called on her late in the year, she was ready. Like, <laughs> and I think that says a lot about her because again, that freshman year is hard and COVID year made it harder for all those freshmen and you know Jamie kind of waited her time and we we had enough things that you know led her to to be you know to have an opportunity late and she did a great job and so I think that kind of gave her some momentum in the offseason she she's a solid player she knows she's a tough player I love that you know she drew drew two charges in our Iowa scrimmage the other day one of which if they'd gone to the replay they would have probably seen that her foot was inside the restricted area <laughs> so <laughs> could have been a real game she'd only had one charge but she does tough tough things like that she's she's a good player and she's a and she can shoot the ball so she's going to get a chance this year she's she's done a done a really good job of you know she's one of the assistant coaches was saying the other day they said Jamie you know you got to do this and she's like thank you you know, so she handles criticism in a, in a different way than a lot of players these days do. Mm -hmm. Like, she, <laughs> you know, usually that maybe the best you're going to get is a is some eye contact and nodding of the head. But she's like thanking you for criticism. And that's uh, it's huge. It yeah. Shows, yeah, it shows what kind of kid she is. So she's going to get a chance. Um, I think she's she's I think she's going to be a low mistake player and, and uh, we'll be able to count on her to do X, Y and Z and. X is rebound, two is is make tough plays, and three is shoot it when she's open. She's she's not a we're not gonna ask her to put the ball on the floor a lot. Um, 
you know, she tried to play point guard one time the other night against Wayne State. <laughs> we said maybe once a game you can do that, but don't be doing that four or five times a game. Um, but but she'll help us this year. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. I think Jordan's one of those dudes who like he'll make eye contact, say thank you, but he'll have like a tone of sarcasm to it. Like, like yeah, I know I screwed up. I don't need you to tell me if I got it. <laughs> I want to move yeah. on to <laughs> I want to move on to Mallory Break because. Uh, you know, just – she had, like, a sneak – I knew she was rebounding well the other night, but I think the final stat sheet shocked me a little bit because I didn't think she was – I didn't think she hauled in that many. So it was, like, a sneaky 14 rebounds, if that's even possible. Um, and normally for a Creighton player to get 14 rebounds, that, that you'd notice that more easily. But, you know, I've talked a lot about – written about and talked about a lot like this, you know, Carly Bachelor, Emma Ronsick, Morgan Malley. And it feels like Mallory's kind of getting lost in the sauce a little bit, but she's not that far off from, you know, getting that, getting minutes with that, that, that group of post players either, or the hybrids as you call them. Um, what do you think of her in her second year so far? You know, another player who played kind of sparingly as a freshman, but has, you know, traditional post skills and has put them on display whenever she's got an opportunity to do so. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, I thought she had eight to ten rebounds, and I looked at the stat sheet and saw she had 14. I'm like, yeah. holy cow. And impacted shots, you know. she, mm -hmm. You know, the first block she had, I mean, we the kid had a straight line to the rim. And I know it's Wayne State. It's not UConn. Mm -hmm. But she still came over and, <laughs> it was you know, took away a straight yeah. line layup. And, uh, you know, her length and her – She's a little bit of a, she's a little like Carly where her skill level isn't Emma's or Morgan's, but it's, but her athleticism and her activity level is going to help us this year. I mean, she in having a year to kind of learn and um, adjust to the college game. I mean, she's, you know, we're slowly getting her to inch her shot out to the three point line, but we're not going to let her shoot a lot of those. But I just think she's, I think she's a great change of pace from those other kids. Mm -hmm. She's defensively, she's got versatility. She can slide her feet. Um, you know, Emma, Emma has a hard time scoring in practice over her. And Mallory's, she's probably only 6'1 at the most, but she plays long. Um, she was a really good volleyball player in high school. So she's, she's a good, she gets off the floor quickly. And uh, I think defensively, she'll have an impact for us. I think she can run the floor and, and, and you know, it sounds stupid, but she can make layups. And that's as a post player, <laughs> yeah. Jordan, you probably played with a post player or two that couldn't make a layup and it doesn't matter. You know, it's nice to have three or four, you know, moves, but, but just being able to make a layup is important. Um, For sure. And so Running I think she's definitely going to help yeah. this year. Simply being able mm -hmm. to run the floor and all that as a big, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. The effort it goes unnoticed, but glad she could step into that role for you guys. I think uh, another one moving moving down the line, another sophomore, Lauren Jensen. You know, transfer. Um, from what I've seen, looks like great shooter, great handle. Uh, what have you seen from her? I guess in this preseason, what have you? What, what do you see her role? I guess becoming within your the the, the team this year. Yeah, Lauren's going to be a a solid combo guard rotation player for us. I mean, we've we've started her in the in the scrimmage in the exhibition and. Whether we start her or bring her off the bench, I think she'll give us some scoring pop because she can shoot it. She can, she's she's thin, she's on the lean side, but she's she can put the ball on the floor a little bit and finish too. Like that was one one of the things that stood out in practice is I thought, oh, she's maybe too too wiry and thin to get to the rim and finish through contact, but she can do a little bit of that. Uh, she's a she's a catch and shoot player, but she can also dance with the ball a little bit. Um, you know, I think she's going to, I think fans are going to like watching her. She hasn't shot it well from the three, um, in either our scrimmage or exhibition, but she is, she's a really good shooter. She's in the gym a lot. Um, she and Morgan are probably on the gun as much as anybody. So I, I think she's going to help us. Uh, I think she just got kind of lost. I always got to, you know, they signed, you know, they got a commitment from Caitlin Clark after Lauren. And, um, I think that really hurt Warren's opportunity there at Iowa, but uh, 
you know, she, she had some good offers coming out of high school and, and she had some good people chasing her from the transfer portal. So she's going to help us and um, just, you know, she's, she's in really good shape. She can move without the ball. Um, I think she can be a, I think she can be a, a kid who can score it for us, but you know, the other night against Wayne, she also had seven assists against one turnover. So she's, she's got those combo guard type uh, skills. Yeah, getting getting lost behind Caitlin Clark is not something that would be a unique problem for everybody <laughs> in the country. That's that's not yeah. a, that's not an indictment of Lauren's skills at all. That kid is different. Yeah. Um, you know your point guard situation last year. It, it was you know it was crazy to see how. I mean, I know by your standards, you won't consider last year a good year, but your schedule was tough. You made you had some big wins. I thought all things considered, it was a good year, but it was tough because your point guards were hardly ever in the lineup, either two at a time or even one at a time late. Um, Molly Mogens is one of those who got to, you know, get a minutes uptick as a freshman because of Tatum's, uh, Tatum's um, um, you know, being in and out of the lineup at times. Uh, what's what's What did that year do for her, and how does she look so far in preseason so far? She gets ready to, you know, it, it, it will be more of a role for her that she was probably going to play last year because Tatum has been, you know, ready and available. But what do you see so far out of Molly? Yeah. Yeah, just growth and maturity that you hope to see from a, a decision make, you know, a decision maker in her second year versus her first year, you know. And she still has practices where, you know, her decision making needs to be better. I mean, there's but there are fewer, fewer and far, further between than, you know, there's been a few where I'm like, oh man, she's gotta, she's gotta be become a better decision maker, but then you know, she'll come back and have two good practices. So just, you know, having that consistency. And that's what's nice about having Tatum is, you know, Molly, when Molly's playing well, she can be on the floor with Tatum or without Tatum. Um, we'll play them together a little bit, but she's also going to be, you know, Tatum's backup. Um, and I just think, you know, her her decision-making is, is going to be key because, um, like you said, we had just a weird point guard situation last year and to have it, have it be more stable this year is, <laughs> is, is, you know, that's exciting. And, uh, so just, I think that maturity and just getting a little better off the ball defensively, a lot of freshmen struggle. I think Molly's a good on ball defender. We, you know, we, we felt like she was maybe as good a matchup as we had for Caitlin Clark. Not that we had a good one, but, <laughs> and she did a good job you on do. Caitlin. You but, do. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, just off her off ball defense was typical of a lot of freshman perimeter players. It's like, mm. well, you can, you can maybe put her on one type of player, but she had more difficulty guarding kids that could do multiple things. Um, so she's, she's gotten better there and, and just, you know, I think, I think she'll, she'll settle into a role because like I said, she'll, she'll play when Tatum's not on the floor, but she'll play some when Tatum's on the floor. And that gives us some, some versatility to, to run Tatum ahead and throw the ball to Tatum ahead or, or vice versa. Gotcha. Uh, this is very appropriate that Jordan gets to ask about Morgan Malley, the gunner. So fire away. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, no, I, I, I did want to touch upon a point you brought up before though, which is a unique, I think, situation that you, you have with your team this year with that hybrid post position um like you were just saying you have like kind of that in in squadrons so that's where my question came from with I, I guess where do you see I guess Morgan Malley fitting into that role and more even on like touch on just that hybrid post position and how you're you plan on implementing that and like your rotation with that because I think it's a unique aspect that you guys have going for you this year yeah thanks well we've I mean, at least for now, we're going to bring her off the bench, which, you know, is kind of hard to think fathom when you realize she scored 28 against Iowa. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to, but so, as, as a gunner, though, I, sometimes you yeah, got to bring the exactly. gunner off the bench. Sometimes you got to bring the gunner in, off the bench. You know, so there is, there's a, you know, there, there is something to be said for going in with, and having a little bit more license to shoot because we've taken maybe a couple of our top weapons off the floor, you know? And so I think I love playing her in that role because she is, I had somebody say the other day, man, she does, she's not afraid to shoot. <laughs> I'm like, no, she's not. And, and we had to get her that point last year, early in, in early practices, you know, 
we our my assistant coaches were on her about like why aren't you shot ready every time because you're such a good shooter and it took her a while to get to that place and then she once she got there she really she really became a factor for us the last two thirds of the season last year um, but uh, you know we got to get her more comfortable in the post because she's she is comfortable on the three you know if you if you said take 13 shots you know she'll take 11 threes. Um, which would be fine if she was five, six, but, <laughs> you know, we've tried to get her more comfortable in the mid post. We've tried to get her more comfortable, you know, cutting to the basket and scoring off cuts. I think she's, and she's better there. There's no question. We've done, a, we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one mid post and, and elbow one-on-one -on -one with our post players this fall. And she's more comfortable there. And I think she can score off that mid post face up. Um, so she'll, because what, what, what we found late last year was teams that were smart played her with a guard because she was, she wanted to shoot threes more than she wanted to go inside. So I, I think against those teams that want to play her, you know, with somebody a little quicker and get up underneath her, she's got to be able to take advantage of, of her size and be able to post, uh, more, but, uh, she's definitely offensively, she's going to be a weapon for us, uh, because she's. She is still a really good catch and shoot player, and uh, and and she's gotten better and more comfortable uh, inside the arc. I want to group these next two together because I think we're running a little bit out of time here. Unfortunately, I thought we had a bigger window, and then I checked the schedule, and it's like volleyball on Friday, men's soccer on Saturday, volleyball Sunday. We're talking to Mac on Monday, then they play on Tuesday, then you guys play. And we're like we ran out of time, so. Um, uh, but I want to group these next two together because I think they complement each other, especially when they're playing together on the floor. Emma Ronsick and Carly Bachelor. You know, Emma, obviously, like Morgan, um, I don't think they're – even though you guys have expanded the three-point line this year, I don't think they're aware of it. They're still kind of like wherever they catch, if their feet are set, they're fine letting it go, which I think you is cool to see because – that's one thing you were, were kind of curious about going into the year was how the three-point line was going to affect players, at least mentally, as they're trying to get shot ready, right? Um, those two don't seem to be affected by that. But then also Carly Batchelor because she's got those traditional post skills. She's a good – you know, she plays with a high motor. She's a good cutter. Um, how do you see Emma and Carly, like, complement each other when they're on the floor together? Yeah, well, they're both – probably even more hybrid like than, than um, Morgan, because right. they're both, like you said, I mean, they're not, you know, Emma's less reliant on the three than Morgan and Carly's even less reliant on the three than Emma, um, but they can both make threes and Emma's probably a little bit more comfortable shooting that. Um, but uh, they both move well without the ball, you know, and, and, and Emma's got great hands. I mean, she's, you know, we talked about that yesterday as a staff is we've, we've thrown her some passes that look like in a lot of cases, you know, it's going to lead to a travel or lead to a turnover and she can catch it and finish in one motion. She looks like Doug. Yeah. She's got a little, I, I don't Doug's <laughs> Doug's not a fair comparison, but she does have that. But it is like, to yeah. find the, she can catch it and find the rim and finish like real quick off balance or, and you're like, wow, that would, it, it wasn't that impressive, but, when you see very them underrated do it, skill very but underrated when you see skill. them do it over and over and they don't hardly ever miss and they don't travel you're like wow that's they're pretty good yeah yeah <laughs> and that's how i'd characterize emma is like she can we'd like to see her post even more i mean there's times where she cuts in there she sees she sees somebody and she's like yeah i'm gonna drift out and get by get back outside the line and we need to get her you know we need to get her better down there because she's probably our best option down there. And then mm -hmm. Carly, you know, Carl, Linda, Linda Sai said, you know, she's just such a recipient scorer. Like she's, because she's a high activity player, she cuts so well. She's comfortable around the basket on, on catches. Um, and, you know, the end of the year, she was great for her because she played well and she got confident. And, you know, at the beginning of last year, she struggled early as a sophomore starting and, we, put, we had some tough matchups for her early. She didn't get off to a great start, and then she got hurt. And, you know, so I'm glad she got to come back and, and, 
and really played well in the conference tournament and the NIT for us because I think that was huge for her going into the off season and her confidence level is is good. We need her to we need her to become a little bit of a stopper defensively because if you look at our team, we don't you know that that hybrid four that we're trying to guard mm. is something that we don't really have a great defensive matchup. You know, Carly's feet are they're fine. They're not, but they're not she's not a lockdown defender and, and um, she's going to have to become, I think even, you know, sacrifice to become that player for us. Cause I think we need that, but uh, they're both, they're both fun to coach cause they can score in, in different ways. And um, you know, they, they, and they receive coaching well. And so um, I think, you know, and they've got good footwork. Carly's not going to score a lot in the post, but she's her, her up and under, um, her junk moves are pretty good. She can score against smaller players, and Emma for sure can. Um, and they can both operate in transition. I mean, Emma's not fast, but, you know, when she catches the ball on the move in transition, she, she played a lot of guard in high school mm. um, up until late in her high school career. So she's, she's also one of those who likes to get a defensive rebound and play point guard two or three times a game. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Carly will do that some too, so. Uh, really versatile players and, and uh, just, and they play well together. Gotcha. Moving on here to, you know, some of the players I, I, I now remember because <laughs> I guess these are the veterans <laughs> now. I guess yeah. these, are these, yeah. we're, are these vet, are the we're in the vet, vet, we're in the vet, vet vets. Vets now. Yeah. Now, and definitely a podcast favorite here. We got T2 Tatum wondering about where she's at, where you're, I guess, I got views on her coming into this year. Um, I guess we talked a lot, I think, in the last time about her being such a leader for your team and stepping into yeah. that role. Uh, I guess how has she progressed in that sense first and then on the court? What are you seeing from her? And, I mean, when you have. Sure. Yeah, I think I think Tatum – I mean, first of all, we're thrilled that she came back. I think, you know, she decided to use her COVID year. I think partly she didn't know what she wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that 22, uh, relatable, what am I going to do in my life? Yeah. So there was some of that, but I think a lot of it was, you know, Hey, I've, I've been hurt the last couple of years. I didn't really get a chance to do my thing at the level that I wanted to, so I can come back and I want to have a great senior year. And so I think anytime you make that decision, you you're all in and not that she wasn't all in, but like, you're, you're just a little bit more invested because it's, you know, you've decided that, that, that this is what you wanted. And so I just think she's, her sense of urgency from last spring to today has been great. And she's a high energy player. She's, um, and she's good energy off the court too. I feel like she's, you know, she can read her teammates and kind of sense who's struggling and she's good about, you know, finding that person and helping them. And um, so I think she's, done a great job of uh of that off the court and then on the court she she just gives us some balance like we're we're not gonna we're not gonna be the Creighton men who are gonna score you know who want to score 88 or the DePaul women who want to score 92 but we're gonna be a better transition team this year than we've been and we've talked about that and she's the she's the biggest reason for that because she can she can get up the floor and, and explore a little bit more than we've had. Um, you know, she's been able to do that when she's healthy the last few years, but I think even as a senior, she's, she's that player now. And so, and because I think we're going to be deeper, we can ask people to run the floor harder mm-hmm. <laughs> with her. And um, she's a facilitator first. I mean, I don't, I think her points per game is going to be 10 or 11. Um, but I think her imprint on the game is going to be as much as anybody, you know, and I think she'll have games where she can, she'll get a 16 to 20, but I think they'll, she'll have games where she's got eight points and eight assists. And, um, and, and defensively, I feel like she's, she's made a little bit of a jump. You know, we've typically had guarded other players, best players with Temi. And uh, this year, you know, especially until we get Rachel back, you know, Tatum's going to have to be that player. And I thought, you know, the other day, I thought she did a good job on Caitlin Clark. Like she's, she's got to be, she's got to be that player for us a little bit more than she's been in the past. And so I think, 
I'm excited to see her take that role too. But uh, yeah, just excited because I think pe- I think she's a player who makes the people around her better um, in a different way than we've had um, the last few years. I'm glad you mentioned Rachel because I wanted to talk about her next. But I guess the way I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on her is a little bit twofold. One, obviously, is like how she progressing in terms of her recovery from that knee injury last year against UConn um, to the point where you feel like she not only trusts it, but you guys can um, trust that she's ready to go out there and not be compromised physically, but also like, who is she now as a player to you? Cause it seemed like before early in her career, it was just, you know, Endless energy, effort plays, toughness, just like I'm going to get in your grill and make make you think I'm the most annoying person in the world to throw you off your game and you're going to have to deal with it. And it feels like now she's just like a different, uh, just a more, just a different, she's like morphed into a different player. She's a leader. She's a co- an extension of the coaching staff. I mean, it's really crazy to see kind of her career arc, despite the fact that you know, the injuries have really not cooperated with her. She hasn't really been given a, a year where she could just let it rip. Um, hopefully it's this year because she deserves it. But um, what have you seen so far in terms of not only her availability coming up, but also just her her evolution as a player in, in your program? Yeah, well, first of all, you talked about, like, she's she's been a good leader off the court. And, and you know, she's sat by Lexi in practice a lot because they haven't, Neither one of them's been able to practice, and she—I know she's in Lexi's ear and been great, a great, uh, a great men- mentor for Lexi these last few months, couple months, and um, you know, people respect Rachel because they know how much she's gone through, and they know, she, you know, how much adversity she's been able to handle, and so we're all hoping for the, you know, I think we need her, we need her toughness, and we need her grit and her experience on the floor, but you also hope just for her sake that she gets the opportunity because she's been through a lot in the last year. And so there's twofold, you know, and it's going to take her a while to, to make an impact on the court. I mean, she's, mm-hmm. I think we're going to get her back on the practice court here pretty quick, Nice. but um, you know, she hasn't played for almost 11 months. So that it's going to be tricky to try to throw her into game a game until she's comfortable and we're comfortable with, where she is and so we'll see but I think like you said she's she's kind of the the you know if you we, if we had a tough meter on our team you know it'd be it'd start with her because yeah. she's just like you said she's we we're, we will be like okay that kid's too tall for Rachel to guard but Rachel will get in her head <laughs> Rachel will be annoying and Rachel will will defend and she'll she won't back down um, so she's been able to guard up and down. We could guard her on a little quicker kid, or we can guard her on a little bit stronger, uh, even a kind of a four type player. So she's got that defensive versatility. She's not a, she's not a playmaker per se on offense, but she can, she can make a play here and there and, and she can catch and shoot and kind of knows who she is. And I think she's, you know, hasn't tried to make too many plays she can't make, which is a big part of it too. But just hopeful that she can get healthy here because I think it'll t- it'll be tricky to get her back into our rotation, but um, I think we're going to need her, you know, especially when we get into the Big East and we see a little more athleticism on the perimeter and we're trying to, you know, stay in front of people or, you know, just have her her defensive versatility, but also her her experience on the offensive end. Uh, Chloe Doric, local kid from Lincoln, um, been in your program her whole career. They, damn NCAA keeps moving that three-point line around on her, but um, so it's another another adjustment she has to make in her in her last year. What what does she give you? Like, just feels like she's just been solid her whole career. Like, you know, not a high mistake player, even, but you know the the impact get, is there, um, maybe in ways you don't always notice, but it helps you out. Yeah. Well, you, like you said, Matt, you know what you're going to get. Like, and that's, you know, you're not necessarily, you know, you're not going to get the most athletic player. You're not going to get at this monster stat line, mm. but you're also not going to get mistake. You're not going to have mistakes. She's going to be in the right spot defensively. 
She's going to, you know, uh, she's going to be in the right spot on an out of bounds play. She's offensively and defensively. She's going to, she's going to screen for Morgan Molly and get her two open threes. You know, that's what she did against Iowa. The first two Morgan's first couple threes open threes were a Chloe screen and a Chloe punch and kick, you know, so she mm. knows, <laughs> she knows what her limitations are and she knows what her teammates strengths are. And um, yeah, like you said, low mistake player is in the right spot, can make open threes um, and is going to know the scouting report. So, you know, she'll be, Chloe will be a kid that some games she's going to get to play a lot because, you know, we, we, we maybe have enough offense and we know she can be in the right spot defensively. And then maybe there'll be another game where she maybe won't play as much because, you know, we're going to need a little bit more, you know, of a scoring punch on the perimeter, but uh, you know, she's done a good job and she kind of knows who she is. Gotcha. I think to close it out here, got the, the homie of mine, Peyton Brodsky. <laughs> and speaking of, just want to highlight the 19 and 10 in 20 going eight for eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So where do you see her stepping into a role for the year? You know, I mean, 20 minutes being that efficient. Shout out to her. I hope she listens to this. Uh, but <laughs> no, happy for her. Where, where, where yeah. do you see her uh, stepping in this year and trying to be as efficient as she was? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be more efficient than eight. Yeah, eight yeah, right. perfect. <laughs> perfect. I knew it was. I knew it was her night when she hit a couple early, but then she she had a post up and she lost control of the ball on the post up and it, it went straight up in the air and went through the basket. That was like her third hoop. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, uh, that's it's Peyton's night because, um, but no, I'm happy for Peyton because I think this can be a, a really good, you know, Agreed. final year for her. Like she's, She's done a good job in practice. Like, you know, we talked about recipient scores and, you know, how good Emma's hands are and how Carly can score off the cut. Well, our our best passer with that group is Peyton. Like, and, and Tatum is a great cutter. So we've kind of opted to play her, to start her and play her with that that group because she's she's so pass ready. And, you know, just watching her in practice with, with those guys, those – those players who can cut she's really she's really effective and um she hit somebody you know, nice out of the high post the other night early in the game right like maybe yeah I, I think the Carly. stats were they didn't have her for a they didn't have her for an assist and we look back and she she had at least one but you know it's funny because yeah she was eight for eight but you know the reason she's playing and starting is probably because she can because of her passing ability and her mm. skills and her her vision um and, you know, defensively, Peyton's always going to, you know, she's not, she's got her coach's side to side quickness. She's, she's not going to terrorize anybody, but she's a, she's a fourth year player who now, you know, she can compensate for what she can't do. And that's what, you know, a little bit like Chloe, those, you know, not, she's not gifted to be a great on ball defender, but she's smart enough now with, with the experience that she has that she can cover for that. And, Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and Peyton's done a good job of leading. She's an emotional player. Like she, when I think she can help us that way too, like she can pick people up and, um, you know, and she's, she's cut down on her mistakes. I mean, that's a big part of it as I feel like she was a driver in high school and we've had to change her into more of a shooter, mm -hmm. um, in college because she wasn't able to get to the basket at this level, the way she was in high school. So it, you know, you had to kind of get some of that away from her and, and um, she's done a good job and I'm, I'm happy for her. And she, and she's rebounded the ball too. Like she had 10 rebounds the other day and, and we've seen that in practice, both hands. Mm -hmm. She's, she's done a, a really good job on the glass. And so um, she did against Iowa, she did against Wayne. So, She's gonna she's gonna have an opportunity to really impact our team uh, this year. I'm happy for Peyton. So let's get you out of here on this. It you know it's it's, a, it's gonna be a broad question, but I think it fits your uh, interview style. So let's see what you think. You give me like what you think is paramount to your success this year as a team, and maybe something that's kind of keeping you up at night right now, where you just feel like 
it's not quite there yet. Like, and you hope it, you, you feel like you need to just collectively focus on that, not only in film session, but in the practice floor in order to shore it up. Well, the easy answer for the first one is just, we got to stay healthy, especially, I think, you know, <laughs> I hate to talk about it, but Tatum's health is, is key because I think she's just such a big part of what we do every day in practice. And she, those fifth year seniors can carry your practices and that it's helpful to make you better. Um, you know, our defensive communicate, our, our, we're a better offense. It's, this isn't going to be borne out every night or every day, but we're going to be a better offensive team than defensive team. Our, mm -hmm. our, our defensive communication and connectedness is, is going to be key. We've got to, we've got to play as a team because we don't have great individual defenders. We've got some length and we've got some physicality that we maybe haven't had in the past, but we gotta, we've got to be a, a good communication team. We've got to stay in plays defensively. And when we do miscommunicate and, and be that team. So th those are, that's the area probably because I do feel like we'll be able to score the ball most nights, not every night, but we'll be able to score the ball most nights, but um, we're still pretty young. And so our defensive, um, communication and connectedness is, is probably the thing that's keeping me up at night. Gotcha. But I think I like our, I like our versatility on offense. Um, I think we can have nights where people, people don't score the ball, but other people are going to be able to, because we're going to play a lot of people and we've got, and we've got a lot of options there. Well, Flynn, as always, when we've had these uh, chats, I never feel like I want to stop talking, even though we have to. <laughs> that means you got to come back on the show, though, so that's a good thing. I but, will. I will. Yeah, we appreciate you breaking down the roster for us and for all the listeners. Um, and we wish you luck here, uh, health-wise, knock on wood, this last week of practice here as you get ready to kick off your season next Tuesday night, right? Wednesday night. Wednesday night in Des Moines Wednesday at night. Drake with the old Bulldogs, uh, old rival from yeah. the NBC. So we appreciate you and wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Man. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Jordan. Good luck this year. Thank you. Shooter, Jordan. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working Stop on it. Stop trying to drive it. I, I got to get it. I got to get a gun <laughs> for my driveway or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But thanks, man. Appreciate right. your time. Right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yes, we appreciate that. That was a good chat with Flan. I, honestly, like I, it is true. Like we never feel like we get enough time with him because it's like we really he's just don't. a fun dude to chat with. Um, dude, the he, the the whole she's got the lateral quickness of her coach. Yes, Mac Mac could have used that a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy he did it because I I heard that and I felt pain. I was like, ah, oh, that's yeah. me. <laughs> I thought like there was some good, yeah, yeah like, there was some good always a good for chat post college Shane. career too like becoming more of a standstill shooter so you can survive noon ball games right yeah that's, yeah my men's league games i gotta get fired up i gotta i gotta learn my that's why i was good to talk to, you know a coach that's what i'm saying he's in his 50s now and he's still playing noon ball so like he's like a guy you should mold your yeah. post college in, career after flan's in great shape Flan's yeah. just in yeah. ridiculous shape um, i gotta get back on that <laughs> I like how you called the post players the squadron. That's like legit. I think we should like roll with that a little bit. They have a cool little. I, I like what he, I like how he explained just that role for his team because I'm glad you brought that up. That hybrid uh, post position, like that little squadron they have, versus and and with he explained how they have the wing mm -hmm. and that combo guard position. I think he like defined all the roles for yeah. the roster very well, which helped me kind of get a picture of how he sees the year going. And especially with um, uh, Morgan off the bench, yeah, like it, that gave me a really good idea for what he's trying to form the identity of their team to be for the year. I don't know. What'd you think? I mean, they really got like a they're really put together really well offensively because it's like mm -hmm. they really there isn't like a, there isn't like the positions are all different. All the play like you put five players on the court and they can all do different things. You know what I mean? Normally, like, especially with Creighton teams or especially in like this, you know, the, the, as the game has evolved, you kind of put like, it's a lot of the, like the better teams have kind of overwhelmed um, their opponents with, we're going to put like three, just knock down Steph Curry type handle and shoot type of players, you know, um, and just overwhelm you because you can't guard all three of that at the same time. 
But th- this this team is like got like five different weapons on the floor, and then you got very different. The, you got the most dangerous one, arguably, offensively coming off the bench. Where and I'm talking like Morgan Malley's range. I don't even think she could tell you because if she catches it and her feet are set, she can get her shot off because she has like an uh, is an unorthodox shot. You know what I mean? It's it's not easy to defend. It's not easy to contest. And even if you're there, she can still create space because there's a little bit of a fade to it where she's comfortable shooting contested threes and making them. So, yeah, I, I, the depth of this I team think offensively is interesting to watch. I, I liked how he, he explained how he saw Morgan in that six-man role, just especially too, because seeing – just comparing it to Denzel's success in that mm-hmm. six-man role, mm-hmm. it's almost better for shooters like that to get a gauge of how the game is going first before they even come in and start taking your shots because like everyone knows you can come out the gate shooting but it's a whole different mindset when you're like watching the game for two three maybe even the first four minutes Mm -hmm. and then you come in and you have a feel for what was going on you're fresh everyone's tired you go pick your spots you know Mm so i think it's going to be interesting to see it's going to be a unique little lineup that they play yeah so like what what does that do for a team's confidence like because Morgan's good enough to start on pretty much every team in this. In oh, it's great. League. Just think aside about from, it. Think about aside it. from think UConn, like, but like for, so for Creighton's confidence, knowing that like, even if they get off to a bad start in a game, knowing that Morgan's coming in in that first rotation off the bench, exactly. like how do you feel as a teammate in that situation? Oh, you feel great because think about it. Say you do get off to that bad start. You're in the game and you're like, dang, like you don't know what to do. And then you're mm-hmm. like, Oh, all right, here's, Switch it up. Like here's a bucket. Like here's and fresh. Here's someone fresh. Say you were running up and down, mm-hmm. and a team just put a crazy run on you. You're like, and you didn't have a response for it, and you're like, oh no. Well, response a lot of the times is timeout and or sub. Like that's yeah, yeah, that's the only sub, ways right. to yeah. that's the only ways to stop that sometimes. So I think she definitely provides that for this team. Um, it'll be nice to see going forward how different lineups i guess respond to i'm interested to see the substitutions like how yeah. he does it rotationally like who's gonna play like who settles into that like when you get to the third rotation who settles into yeah. the majority yeah. of the Buc- minutes who's right. yeah. yeah who's gonna be the bucket getter then mm-hmm. that's what i want to know so it, it, they'll be fun to watch man i'm excited yeah that's kind of like where you throw that into the good problem to have category mm-hmm. for a coach like mm-hmm. how do we figure out this third rotation like who's gonna play and who's who's gonna sit well yeah. It's good to have that problem because it means you have oh, options. Yeah. So, And um, he said that, too, because when, when he was at the end where he said, you know, they're definitely going to be a better offensive team than defensive team. I think that's where their identity will be. Yeah. I think that's why. It's because they have that nice problem to have where he's like, I don't know who my who, – what my lineup is going to be there yet, but I'll let them figure it out. Like, right. I'm just going to, I guess, mess around with the lineup until it is – and you and you and like you can like attest to this too because you know defense is a very layered um area of the floor in terms of what makes you good on that end right like you can have the best team in the world at like just making teams take tough shots creating turnovers and whatnot but maybe you're not a great rebounding team so you have to be good at that stuff like i think where this creating team can um supplement some of its lateral quickness on the perimeter and maybe lack of athleticism at certain spots, depending on their matchups, right? Like, um, I think rebounding is one area where they can shore up that stuff. Like, if they just, like, he talks about Chloe Doric and Peyton Brodsky and players that, like, kind of understand defensive positioning because of their experience and know where to be and know how to line up and how to contest shots. Um like if they can find a way to be really good at that in terms of positioning, I think they have a chance to be a really good rebounding team. Um, and that'll help them because if they're not giving up second chance points. They're then they're just at the mercy of shot making, which is fickle in college basketball. So that might help. Yeah, and them. a lot of, and a, a lot of defense too is experience. So it's like yeah. that, that to that. That's why I think that's a great just point. Knowing scout like stuff, right? They're going to get better defensively the more because they with a transfer and people stepping up in their role well, players stepping up in their roles 
it's like they'll, they'll string that together, but it's nice to see that they have the offensive like identity at least figure it out for the most part. Because defensively, yeah. I guess I'm not that worried that they'll figure it out. Where it's actually funny because I'm like, it's the opposite. I I feel like with the men's team, but for this mm-hmm. team, no, I, I think I agree. it's just yeah. like yeah. Defensively, I'm I, I think they'll figure it out as the year goes on because players will learn like Chloe and Peyton have where to be and how to be in position. So excited because they'd, they'd be, you'd be in rough shape as a team. If, if you weren't sure about your answers offensively and the defensive mistakes kind of, oh, like yeah. you have lapses defensively because of certain things and your offense is maybe a little bit inconsistent. That would lead itself to being not as confident in games because you're maybe one five minute segment away from getting a run put on you that like changes the complexion of the game. Right. So at least yeah. figuring out one end of the floor where they know they can score in a variety of ways gives them enough confidence to know that they can compete on a nightly basis, regardless of who they're playing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, we appreciate you tuning in for our women's basketball preview. Um, great women's basketball preview as we get you ready for the season. Again, the Jays tip off their regular season Wednesday night in Des Moines at Drake. Uh, I might cool. be there for that. I'm deciding whether I want to go to that or not. It's usually a fun little road You're going to pull up on D-Rock? I, I, dude, I was thinking about that because they play. I'll pull up on my man D-Rock. Yeah, they play on the ninth, so I'm about to hit them up and see if they practice that day. I might, like, make it a little day. So, yeah, you, know, you should. A, watch a D-Rock practice. And then watch I want to know, yeah, let me know how Tuck looks. I want to – I can't – he's probably – Ooh, he had, like, a – He looked me, nice now. the other night. He had yeah. – <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I always used to say, like, I think that dude's going to have, like, a Doug-like career where he's just going to – He's not one of those dudes who's going to be on like these top 10 freshmen to watch lists or whatever going into the year, but I think he'll be on it by the end. Like, I'm but he's in, he's in better shape than Doug ever was. Like, don't you think so? He's, yeah. He's the yeah, lead, man. Yeah. He looks I, good. He got the, he got the clean good. cut last night, too. I don't know if you saw any of the highlights. Like, because Doug, Doug didn't get a fade till he got to the league. Tuck got a fade. <laughs> yeah. Tuck got a fade in college. Yeah. No, he's Different. looking sharp. He's like he and, and honestly, when the dudes get the haircut, that's my first sign to know that they feel good about their game. Because normally it's, it's true. Like, I'm oh, not trying to it? like. <laughs> normally, I see that. I'm, so like, I'm like, oh, he's a he thinks he's a problem at least, like because like he's got he wants to show off like some swag now. That was, if, you know, if, you know, from the AAU tournaments, it was the the swaggy P cut when the yeah. dudes had the the hawk with the right. fake, yeah. If you knew if a dude showed up to the AAU tournament with that cut, he was feeling himself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if dude, when dudes show up, when they start getting right in the bar in the barber shop, I'm like, oh, that dude feels good about what he's doing on the court right now. Look out. So yeah, once I talk, once I talk talk on the court, I'm like, oh uh he's been in the lab. (laughs) He's he he knows he's a problem. That's not good. Um, so yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, yeah, we might check the list. We just now hyped up the listeners. We just hyped up the listeners, so we did. If you can sure. get to that Des Moines practice, you got to go. I know. Give us I an update. So. We'll Give us see. an update. Let us know. D Rock would be the type of coach to practice after a game too, so I would maybe it's, maybe there's a chance that it happens with we'll six see. Red Bull. Yeah, <laughs> six Red Bull. D Rock. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody tuning in. You know the drill. I'm Matt. He's Jordan. Um, we'll hit you back. We got the men's basketball preview coming up soon too, so check that out when it, when it pops up. But be on the um, lookout. Yeah. So it's ball season, season, baby. Let's get Basketball it. Basketball season. Ball. Let's ball. It's coming. Let's All talk right, ball. Buddy. Let's do it.